Cornelius Oswald Fudge, Order of Merlin First Class, was the Minister for Magic from 1990 until 1996. Although considered good-natured early in his term, his neglect, ignorance and complete denial of Voldemort's return led him to go down as one of, if not the weakest, most ineffective Minister for Magic in the history of the British Ministry. This is the life of Cornelius Fudge. During his childhood and teenage years, Fudge attended Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. His Hogwarts house is unknown, but given his ambition to go into politics and his multiple examples of cunningness in order to achieve certain goals, my opinion is that Cornelius Fudge was sorted into Slytherin House. By 1981, Fudge was the junior minister in the Department of Magical Accidents and Catastrophes. After the attack at Godric's Hollow, he was one of the first on the scene after Sirius Black seemed to kill Peter Pettigrew, but unknown to anybody else, Black had been framed by Pettigrew himself. Fudge actually claimed that Sirius Black was laughing manically as he was captured. When the time came to succeed Millicent Bagnold as the next Minister for Magic, Albus Dumbledore was the top candidate as many people requested him to accept the position but he refused it multiple times. Therefore, Bartimus Crouch Sr. was favoured to be the next minister for his effective methods of fighting the Death Eaters. However, when the scandal of his son, Barty Crouch Jr. being a Death Eater and spy for Voldemort was unveiled, Crouch Sr. lost almost all of his support and Fudge succeeded Bagnold as the new Minister for Magic. Something Fudge never forgot, however, was how much popular support that Albus Dumbledore received during the election. In Fudge's early days as minister, he was not very self-confident and constantly sent letters to Albus Dumbledore asking him for advice. However, he grew into the position but more so acted out of doubt instead of being a confident leader. At some point early on during his ministerial career, Fudge awarded himself an Order of Merlin First Class. This caused a good deal of negative discussion amongst the wizarding community, since the common view was that his career was less than distinguished, thus subverting the worth of this award, which is given out for acts of outstanding bravery and distinction. The award has three different classes of merit depending on the level of achievement, many feeling not even the third class award justified anything that Cornelius had done thus far in his career. After four attacks on Muggleborn witches and wizards occurred, Fudge arrived at Hogwarts in the spring of 1993 to remove Rubius Hagrid and take him to Azkaban prison, not as punishment but as a precaution. Fudge assured Hagrid that he would be released immediately if another person was found to be responsible. Dumbledore tried to convince Fudge that taking Hagrid would make no difference but Fudge could not ignore his duty, he had no other choice. At the same time, Lucius Malfoy, then school governor, had Dumbledore suspended, which Fudge tried to protest against but in futility. It was proven that Hagrid was indeed innocent and he was eventually released. That summer, Sirius Black escaped from Azkaban. A few weeks prior to Black's escape, Fudge had visited him while on a tour of Azkaban prison and was unnerved at how normal Black seemed relative to the other prisoners. Convinced Black would be caught quickly, Fudge alerted the Mughal Prime Minister of the situation and asked that Muggles keep an eye out for Black as well. The Ministry set up a special hotline for Muggles to call with any information. Because of Black's connection to Harry Potter, Fudge was reluctant to inform Harry of the truth, something to which Arthur Weasley voiced his opposing opinion. When Harry left the Dursleys after blowing up Vernon's sister Marge, Fudge intercepted him outside the Leaky Cauldron after disembarking from the night bus during his misguided attempt to go on the run. Fudge assured Harry that the problem had been dealt with. Marge had been punctured by members of the Accidental Magical Reversal Squad and her memory modified by Obliviators. When Harry asked what would happen to him, Fudge told him not to worry and that he would forgo any punishment since the circumstances had changed. The truth was, 
Fudge had let Harry off because he had been relieved to find him alive. Fudge then asked Harry that, for his own protection, he stay at the Leaky Cauldron for what remained of the summer and not to venture back into the Muggle London. Harry agreed and then asked Fudge if he would consider signing his Hogsmeade permission slip, to which Fudge uncomfortably declined as he was not a parent or a guardian. As a misguided attempt to protect the students, Fudge posted the mentors around the school, which nearly produced tragic results. The teachers, as well as Madame Rosmerta in Hogsmeade, found the creature's presence distracting and highly unpleasant, and Harry was a frequent target of the Dementor's actions. In October, Fudge was alerted to Black's entry into Hogwarts on Halloween nights. Convinced Black was hiding either in or around Hogsmeade, Fudge had the Dementors search the area, calling it a necessary precaution. In December, he journeyed to the school and stopped at the Three Broomsticks with Professors McGonagall, Flitwick and Hagrid. Inviting Rosmerta to join them, Fudge proceeded to explain Black's connection to Harry Potter and that all evidence pointed out that Black told Voldemort where the Potters were hidden almost a week after he was appointed their secret keeper. Fudge then admitted that he believed Black's eventual plan was to find Voldemort and return him to power. After this, Fudge left the pub for a meeting with Dumbledore. Unbeknownst to him, Harry Potter overheard the entire conversation and was greatly affected by it, hoping for the opportunity to kill Sirius Black. In June, Fudge arrived at Hogwarts once again, this time for two reasons. Firstly, to check on the Sirius Black situation and second, to witness the execution of Buckbeak the Hippogriff. At 2 o'clock, Fudge attended Buckbeak's appeal, but the Committee for the Disposal of Dangerous Creatures did not reverse its decision. Fudge returned to Hagrid's cabin to witness the execution, but when McNair stepped outside to perform the act, he noticed that Buckbeak had disappeared. When Severus Snape returned Harry, Ron, Hermione and Black to the school after the events in the Shrieking Shack, Fudge informed him that for his actions, he would try to secure an Order of Merlin second or first class for him. Moments later, Fudge entered the hospital wing after hearing Harry's shouts. Harry and Hermione attempted to convince Fudge that Peter Pettigrew was still alive. Several minutes later, when Professor Dumbledore arrived to speak privately with Harry and Hermione, Fudge decided to meet the Dementors and rendezvous with Dumbledore later. When they learned Black had escaped again, Fudge returned with Snape and Dumbledore to the hospital wing, where Snape furiously ordered Harry to explain his involvement. However, Fudge seemed to think Harry being involved was impossible and left to inform the Ministry about the situation and agreed to remove the Dementors from the grounds due to their attempt to use the Dementors' kiss on Harry the previous night. Before the 1994 Quidditch World Cup, Fudge met again with the Mughal Prime Minister to inform him of the magical creatures he was bringing into the country for the tournament. At the World Cup, Fudge greeted Harry in a fatherly fashion and introduced him to several foreign wizards including the Bulgarian Minister for Magic. Fudge also extended friendly greetings to the Malfoy family. After the match ended, Fudge was irritated to learn that the Bulgarian minister could actually speak English and that his own needs to communicate through sign language had not been necessary. Along with the Bulgarian minister, Fudge then shook hands with the two teams. In the spring of 1995, Fudge was summoned to Hogwarts after Barty Crouch was seen going mad and then disappeared. Fudge decided to cover up this embarrassing situation and also refused to believe anything Crouch said, believing it to be words of a lunatic. Fudge even suggested that Olymp Maxime had murdered him due to her being a half-joint, since the incident occurred near the Bobaton's carriage that night. When Dumbledore expressed his belief that Fudge's accusations was due to his personal prejudice towards half-breeds, Fudge, in turn, believed that Dumbledore's friendship with Rubius Hagrid, another half-joint, was clouding his judgement. Harry pointed out that Madame Maxime would have had a difficult time hiding due to her size, and this left Fudge feeling rather embarrassed. Fudge was later asked to fill in for Mr Crouch as a judge of the 1994 Triwizard Tournament, since his assistant Percy Weasley was hauled in for questioning regarding the incident and was unable to attend. When Harry exited the Triwizard maze holding Cedric Diggory's dead body, 
Fudge informed the crowd and then tried to get Harry to release him. When Harry did release Cedric's corpse, Fudge suggested that he go immediately to the hospital wing. Dumbledore refused the suggestion, wanting Harry to remain where he was. When Fudge was informed the Death Eater responsible had been caught and feeling his personal safety was in jeopardy, he summoned a Dementor to accompany him into the castle, disregarding both Dumbledore's obvious dislike for the creatures and the fact that the culprit was already restrained. The Dementor then sucked out Barty Crouch Jr's soul, leaving him an empty shell of his former self, unable to give a testimony about Voldemort's return. This lack of testimony helped Fudge discredit Dumbledore the following year. Paranoid that Dumbledore may have had a desire on the role of Minister for Magic himself, Fudge refused to believe the warning that Voldemort had returned. Fudge's decision was also influenced by one of Rita Skeeter's articles about Harry. In the article, Skeeter wrote that Harry's scar had had a long-term negative effect on his mental health, and this led Fudge to suggest that Harry may have been hallucinating, which made Harry an unreliable witness in Fudge's mind. So when Harry started naming the identities of the Death Eaters who returned to Voldemort's side, he could only identify those who had been cleared by the Wizengamot, which Fudge claimed Harry could have easily looked up in old copies of the Daily Prophet and took it as a great offence. Seeing Dumbledore's suggestions of removing the Dementors from Azkaban and sending envoys to the Giants as ludicrous, fearing he would be forced out of office for even suggesting it, Fudge and Dumbledore accepted that they had reached a parting of ways. Fudge was left to act as he saw fit, while Dumbledore acted immediately to reactivate the Order of the Phoenix. Even screaming argument with Minerva McGonagall and seeing Severus Snape's reactivated Dark Mark branding did not convince him in the very least. If anything, he was increasingly angry at Minerva and revolted at Severus. Before leaving the school, Fudge was courteous enough to hand Harry his winnings for the tournament, though he cancelled the award ceremony due to the circumstances. Over the summer, Fudge used his influence at the Daily Prophet to create a campaign designed to slander and discredit both Albus Dumbledore, who Fudge thought was after his job, and Harry Potter. He made it clear that anyone in league with Dumbledore could consider themselves dismissed from the Ministry, leading to many members of the Order of the Phoenix to become more discreet with their meetings. He also changed many laws in an attempt to stop Dumbledore and Potter from gathering supporters turning a simple case of underage magic into a trial by the entire Wizen Gamod. In his great haste to withhold certain laws, he ended up neglecting a few as well. He also invited Percy Weasley to become his junior minister in an attempt to spy on the Dumbledore loyal Weasley family. Even though Percy accepted, he defected from his entire family due to a quarrel, though Fudge was allegedly gracious of this, at least according to Percy. When Harry was accused of using magic illegally in the presence of a muggle, Fudge took a leading role in Harry's persecution before the Wizengamot and actively sought to discredit Harry, going so far as to change the time and location of the hearing in an attempt to make him miss it, and during the actual hearing, introducing irrelevant considerations and highly biased accusations based around Harry's past offences while seeking to deny Harry's right to a fair chance to present his own version of events. Only the intervention of witness Arabella Fig and Dumbledore himself spared Harry from expulsion, though Fudge attempted to deny their testimonials and unfairly voted for Harry's conviction himself. After the hearing, Fudge outright ignored Harry and Arthur Weasley as he walked past them. Driven by paranoia, Fudge sought to undermine Dumbledore's credibility and authority both at Hogwarts and at large in the Wizarding World, which he accomplished first by ensuring that Dumbledore was presented in the news as a crackpot. Soon afterwards, Fudge's senior undersecretary Dolores Umbridge was installed at Hogwarts as the school's new defence against the Dark Arts professor. Fudge had Umbridge teach Hogwarts students to read their textbooks instead of practising defence of spells out of a paranoid belief that Dumbledore intended to train his students into an army to overtake the Ministry. By means of numerous Ministry decrees, Fudge gradually extended her powers while suppressing Dumbledore's and Harry's freedom of expressing their claims. 
Fudge eventually handed full control of Hogwarts to Umbridge when, one evening, Harry was caught violating Educational Decree number 24. Dumbledore took the blame and escaped after swiftly defeating Fudge, Umbridge, Kingsley Shacklebolt and John Dawlish, thus being dismissed as headmaster and became a wanted criminal. After the mass breakout of Azkaban in 1996, Fudge continued to refuse to believe Harry and Dumbledore, instead suggesting that Sirius Black was the leader of the breakout due to the fact that he and Bellatrix Lestrange were cousins, either unaware or neglecting that Sirius had been disowned by his family and the two were mortal enemies. The Death Eaters took full advantage of Fudge's ignorance and poor decisions and were able to rebuild their forces with little detection and interference. Lucius Malfoy, amongst other falsely reformed Death Eaters, remained in Fudge's trust, while discreetly manipulating him to assist their master and their own benefits. While the Order and Harry considered the possibility of Fudge being under the Imperius curse, Dumbledore believed otherwise, which was of little comfort. Fudge's term as Minister for Magic ended in 1996, when shortly after the Battle of the Department of Mysteries, he and several other Ministry officials saw Voldemort for themselves in the Ministry Atrium. Forced to accept the truth, Fudge was pressured by the public and media and resigned within a fortnight of the incident on July 2nd, 1996, for failing to see the danger at hand and act on it. His inability to see the reason caused major setbacks, but he was capable of admitting that he was wrong, though only with damnable and solid evidence that he saw with his own eyes. For instance, Fudge was able to admit to the wizarding community with somewhat humbleness of coming to the conclusion that the rootless manhunt for Sirius Black was all for nothing due to the fact that he was innocent all along, which Fudge only discovered when he learned from Dumbledore that Black was the Order of the Phoenix only casualty in the Battle of the Department of Mysteries, in which he was killed by his own cousin in front of Harry. The whole of Great Britain were not prepared for the open warfare that followed. Under Fudge's ineffective leadership, Lord Voldemort and the Death Eaters had an entire year of uninterrupted planning. When the full consequences of his actions, or rather lack of it after Voldemort's return became known, the wizard community issued a virtually unanimous condemnation of his tenure. Fudge would later comment sadly that he had never known the wizarding community to be so united on any other issue during his administration. Giving this universal disapproval, he was likely memorialised, like Dumbledore warned, as one of the least effective and weakest ministers in British history. Prior to his dismissal, he made desperate attempts to remain in office and tried to have Dumbledore arrange a meeting with Harry to persuade him to tell the wizarding world that the Ministry was doing a good job in maintaining order and security. In short, Fudge wanted Harry to lie to the wizarding world, which is ironically what he actually accused Harry of prior. This failed as Dumbledore refused to make the arrangement, knowing that Harry would think the idea outrageous, but the idea did not die out when Rufus Scrimgeour took over. Also, prior to his dismissal, Fudge was threatened by Voldemort to stand aside as minister or a mass murder of Muggles would take place. Fudge still refused, which resulted in the collapse of the Brockdale Bridge. He stayed on as an advisor and messenger to the Mughal Prime Minister for Scrimgeour, as Scrimgeour was too busy to contact the minister himself. In 1997, Fudge was one of the many citizens of the Wizarding World to attend the funeral of Albus Dumbledore. It is unknown what happened to Fudge after Lord Voldemort took over the Ministry of Magic, but we do know he lost his position as messenger between the Minister and Muggle Prime Minister, as the Death Eaters had no use for Muggle liaisons. And that is all for today's video everyone, thank you so much for watching, please consider subscribing to the channel if it is your first time watching, and if you're a fan of the channel and feel like you'd like to contribute, my restructured Patreon account is up and running, and in exchange for your contribution of a minimum of $1 a month, there are many rewards you can receive, like suggesting one of my upcoming videos, exclusive Patreon only videos for you to watch and even one to one Skype calls where we can hang out and talk everything Harry Potter or anything in general. So please make sure to check out some of my other videos on the left hand side of the screen. My second channel Game of Throne Lore is on the right hand side of the screen. And if you want to check out some merch, I've got a merch store on the bottom right or you can click the link in the description below. Thanks again everyone and I hope you all have a great day.